this video, I'll show you how to import data from a Microsoft Excel file into a Designer for Microsoft Access database. As you can see here, we have a customer Excel file with customer information on the left and contact information on the right. So the customer information is repeated for each contact. When we load the data into Access, however, the database looks like this. There's a customer table where all the customer information will be stored a contact table for the contact information and then these tables on the outside are lookup tables with values that a user can select from a drop-down box. Your database will likely look very similar. The first step with your Excel file is to make certain if you have phone numbers or any sort of information that is stored as a numeric value that you remove formatting. A good example of this is phone number. If we look in the contact table, phone numbers are actually stored as a number and numbers technically can't have brackets or spaces in the field. As you can see in the bottom here, there's something called an input mask, which is where to the user it will appear as though they're entering in a formatted telephone number. To remove that, just simply remove any bracket spaces from the phone number. Typically a postal code is stored as an alphanumeric or a text field, so you don't need to remove any formatting there. The first step will be for us to import our Excel file, so I select External Data and Import Excel. Select the file you want to import. Choose the sheet where the data resides. You can select First Row Contains Column Headings, and then finally name it something that you'll remember that you can delete later. In this example I'm going to call it Temporary Staging Table. The name isn't so important as just that you remember you won't need it after this process. So now I have my temporary staging table as well as all the tables that I want to import data into. We'll start first by loading the external tables, the lookup tables. So we'll load values for state and province and customer type in this particular video. I do that by creating a new query. Click create on the ribbon, then query design. Let's select the staging table whatever you imported from Excel. And now we're going to load the state table. So I drag that down into the field here and I change the query type to append. Append means we're going to add the records to another table. So I want to add this to the state province table. And here where it says append to, I'm going to choose state province which happens to be the text value for state. Now it's important to click this totals button here. The reason for that is in our spreadsheet we have these values repeated many times. By selecting this totals it's going to do what's called a group by which means that it will only add the unique states not duplicates. So once we're satisfied we've got it set up I click run and now we can go look at our state province table and you can see that we have unique values loaded in for these four states and that automatically the system will assign a number to these. This number will be important in just a moment when we're talking about how state is stored in the customer table. So let's do one last import and that's going to be appending to the customer type table which is also a lookup table. So in this case I need to find the customer type field from Excel, remove the other field, and I'm going to say I want to append to customer type have my totals selected, click run, and now you can see that our customer type table is loaded with those three unique values from the spreadsheet and the type identifier. Next we're going to load the customer table. To do that, we're going to click append again, and this time we're going to choose customer. Now we know customer name is one of the fields, address, city, Postal. We're going to leave state off for a moment. Same with customer type. Now you'll note that Access automatically knows to match a field if the names are the same. But in some cases you'll need to manually match them. Now I need to load in customer type and state. And the way we'll do that is first by joining the customer type and the state province table based on the text value. So I've got customer type, which I know I loaded from the Excel spreadsheet, and state matches with this field in the text. 
and I'm going to drag the unique identifier fields down from the lookup tables and I'm going to load those into the corresponding fields in the customer table. They'll have the same name and be preceded by FK underscore. Now if I click view I can preview and see that what we'll be loading is the four customers and the corresponding unique ID for this state for each of these states and customer types. So once I'm satisfied with that I can click run and now let's go look what this looks like. If I open up my customer form you'll notice that customer type is showing the user-friendly text but in the table in the background is actually the number that refers to that customer type. The last thing we'll need to load is the contact information. So let me show you how that happens. We've just loaded the customer information. So now we're going to add the customer table up here and we're going to join by the customer name since those are unique. And I'm going to indicate that I want to append this information to the contact table. And all I need to do is add these three fields, but if you'll recall, the contact table is linked back to the customer table. And it's linked based on this customer ID field. So what we need to do is make certain that we're loading the right customer ID into the contact table. To do so, I'm going to drag the customer ID from the customer table, and then I'm going to append to the same field, but with FK preceding it. And once I have all of my fields mapped, just click Run. And now when we look at our customer form, you'll notice that we have our contacts associated with those customers as I change the selections. So that's how you load a flat spreadsheet into what's called a relational database. It does take quite a few steps to get there depending on the number of lookup fields that you might have. But once you've done that, you no longer have to have duplicate information like you did in a spreadsheet. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact support.